Last but not least, we got the closing statements. Welcome back tonight. The time has come for closing statements. And Vice President Harris, we begin with you. So I think you've heard tonight two very different visions for our country. One that is focused on the future and the other that is focused on the past and an attempt to take us backward. But we're not going back. And I do believe that the American people know we all have so much more in common than what separates us. And we can chart a new way forward. And a vision of that includes having a plan, understanding the aspirations, the dreams, the hopes, the ambition of the American people, which is why I intend to create an opportunity economy, investing in small businesses, in new families, in what we can do around protecting seniors, what we can do that is about giving hardworking folks a break and bringing down the cost of living. I believe in what we can do together that is about sustaining America's standing in the world and ensuring that we have the respect that we so rightly deserve, including respecting our military and ensuring what? we have the most lethal fighting force in the world. I will be a president that will protect our fundamental rights and freedoms, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. I'll tell you, I started my career as a prosecutor. I was a DA, I was an attorney general, a United States senator, and now vice president. I've only had one client, the people. And I'll tell you, as a prosecutor, I never asked a victim or a witness, are you a Republican or a Democrat? The only thing I ever asked them, are you okay? And that's the kind of president we need right now. Someone who cares about you and is not putting themselves first. I intend to be a president for all Americans and focus on what we can do over the next 10 and 20 years to build back up our country by investing right now in you, the American people. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump? So she I'm going to stop right there, guys, before we go on to Trump's. And uh, just want to just wanna point out a couple things here I thought were kind of important here. I don't know if you understand this or not. I don't know if you can recognize it, but Kamala's clearly trying to sell you the dream. That's exactly what she's doing. When she says, uh, we're more united. We're, we're united by more than what separates us. That's Obama talk. That's, if I'm not mistaken, that's directly lifted from his fuck. It's directly lifted from his speech, changed around a little bit. We're not the blue states of America. We're not the red states of America. We are the United States of America. Fall for that again. No one cares about that. What we care about is, are we going to be able to live indoors? Are we going to be able to build any type of wealth? For black America, that needs to be our focus. Not this, we need the kumbaya shit. We passed kumbaya. We have past people telling us, we going to be, everybody going to be treated the same because we know we're not all going to be treated the same. This is America. If we know how to do one thing, it's treat people different. We've been really good at that. We've been doing that since the, since before America was America. We've been treating people differently. Now you think because her Jamaican Indian ass gets in there, she's going to change that somehow? How? She's, she's relying on the gullibleness of people who mean well and the, the greediness of people who who mean money. She says, and I thought this was disgusting. She says, American get the, the respect we deserve in the world. Folks, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I know, you, I know you're stupefied. You're lost in the sauce. Your brain is mush. But if you believe that we deserve respect in the world, you ain't been paying attention, man. We got all these military bases, hundreds of, 100, 200, how many military, how many military bases we got around the world? We didn't just want to run America. What did George Collins say? We wanted to run the world. They don't want us for our freedom. They want us because we keep meddling in their countries. We keep overthrowing their governments. We keep on raging proxy wars. Respect in the world. You ain't fear. I'm sorry, you misspelled fear. 
That's the word you were looking for. And the way she's talking, there'll be a lot more fear, enhanced fear, enhanced interrogation. She's gloating about having Dick Cheney as a supporter. What does that tell you? Her president, her president's president, war criminals. Point blank war criminals. The only reason why they haven't been rounded up is because we have powerful military. Um, and number three, when she talked about prosecutor, DA, attorney general, her background, all I can think is something that's very basic. There are a lot of people who have law degrees like Kamala Harris. They don't go in. They didn't go into practice law or get a law degree to lock up people. Stop buying the idea that she did it because she wanted to break up rings of child abductors. Stop with the bullshit. In California, most of the laws that she was protecting in San Francisco were drug laws. Okay? That's what it was. The majority, the overwhelming majority of the crimes that she processed, that she charged for, that she sought felonies for, were nonviolent drug offenses. There's not, like all other district attorneys, like all other prosecutors, that's mainly what runs our prison systems. They'll have this one case they point to that tugs at your heart, and it'll be about somebody catching a stray bullet or a child or these people she had to talk to. Most of the people that she talked to were people that she didn't let plead out because she hit with heavy time. I had a guy come on my show who was from California. He still didn't want to talk bad about her. Because he was afraid. Because Kamala Harris is vindictive. And everybody in California knew it. That person you see smirking and looking at Trump like he's a piece of shit. That's how she looked at people. That's the real Kamala Harris. Not the joy shit. That's the fake. That's smoke and mirrors. That's for the dum-dums to soak up. To lie to themselves. Last point with her. <clears throat> and this is for um, this is for black Americans particularly black folks if you let another person go in the office telling you they're going to be the president of all America without you realizing that's code for Negro don't you ask me for shit because that's what that's code for that's her telling white folks off the break. Off the break. I'm not here for no black people. Don't get it twisted. I know what I say. I know what I look like. Uh -uh. It ain't that type of party. You don't think she's saying that for anybody else, do you? Why would she give a shit what you think? She won't even claim her blackness in front of you. Nah, she's making sure people know. Because she realizes America's pretty racist. And I'm not saying she could get elected by being really black if that's the case. Shit, I'd be president. But when a black person says, hey, man, hey, hey. When a black person says they colorblind, they talking to your ass. They talking to white people, telling white people, don't trip. Don't even trip. I look black, but I'm not. That's what that is. When a white person says it, they're trying to tell black people to feel a little more comfortable. Hey, I'm kind of blind. I know you're black, but I'm going to try my best not to be racist, at least that overtly. But when a black person says, hey, people, I'm not, they're letting black people, they're putting white people on notice. Black people don't get no favors under their ass. In fact, they'll lean into not doing They'll do even less so they avoid any misconceptions that they may be doing favoritism towards you. You understand? You understand? You get it? All right. Let's go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump's closest statement. 
Just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? She should leave right now, go down to that beautiful White House, go to the Capitol, get everyone together and do the things you want to do, but you haven't done it and you won't do it because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in things like we're not going to frack, we're not going to take fossil fuel, we're not going to do things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. Germany tried that, and within one year, they were back to building normal energy plants. We're not ready for it. We can't sacrifice our country for the sake of bad vision. But I just ask one simple question. Why didn't she do it? We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. All over the world, they're laughing. I know the leaders very well. They're coming to see me. They call me. We're laughed at all over the world. They don't understand what happened to us as a nation. We're not a leader. We don't have any idea what's going on. We have wars going on in the Middle East. We have wars going on with Russia and Ukraine. We're going to end up in a third world war, and it'll be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. I rebuilt our entire military. She gave a lot of it away to the Taliban. She gave it to Afghanistan. What these people have done to our country, and maybe toughest of all, is allowing millions of people to come into our country. Many of them are criminals, and they're destroying our country. The worst president, the worst vice president in the history of our country. President Trump, thank you. And that is our ABC News presidential... All right. Now for Trump. I got to say, man, if Trump knows how to go above, above and exaggerate, go over the top, that's what he's been doing all his career. That's why he's Trump. He knows how to sell it. And some of those things I think he's selling. And I don't know if world leaders are calling him up going how horrible America is. But who knows? Who knows who's calling him? I don't know. Just seems a little weird. The fact that there's a possibility of a world war, kind of advantageous for you to bring that up to use fear to get people to vote for you. So I take all that with a grain of salt. That's true. I take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I do like one thing. I think if Donald Trump would have kept most of his debate centered around that core topic, as much as they tried to spin, because I know they are, I know they would. It would be hard to spin it because I think Trump would have won this thing hands down with 90% of people. If he just would have stuck to his guns of why haven't you already done it? Why haven't you already done it? Why don't you do it now? Because he's running against the person that's a part of the current administration. She would either have to break with Biden and admit she didn't do shit, or she'd have to admit she didn't know what she was doing, or he didn't know what he was doing, and she's not going to do that. I think that was the kill shot that he needed to stay on, that, not defending himself about things of crowd sizes and other lame attacks. Now, nah, people will get to that. At the end of the day, it's about the economy, and it's about that question right there, man. If you're so great, why is this so shitty? Why is it so bad right now if you're so great? Because you are in charge. And don't tell me it's Biden. And I think that would have knocked it out, man. I really do. That's the strategy I would have taken. Is Trump the answer? I'm not saying it's the answer, but I know the answer, sure as hell, is not Kamala Harris. I've been on the record, man. I told you. I think she's the greater evil, and I do. And I say that because I got the guts to say it. I got the guts to say it. Whether I lose subscribers or gain subscribers or whatever the hell. I've been somehow existing all this time without those people being here. And if that's going to make them leave, so what? I'm just telling you what I think. Trump can do four years. There's just so much damage Trump can do. I'm actually disappointed in people 
who went the other way. And I'm not talking about regular people that, that vote. I'm talking about, about people who I looked up to in the political sphere. sphere. People I looked up to or people that I work with in independent media. Because if you do the math, like I said earlier, what's more dangerous, one guy or the entire Democratic Party system that hasn't had a fair and clean election for the last three primaries? Yeah. And I might want to throw in a general election, too. Because I still can't fathom. I can't understand how people with common sense and logic, reasonable people, man, think somehow Joe Biden was more popular than Barack Obama. How the hell did Joe Biden get more votes than Barack Obama? As a joke, I forget how it goes, but I don't think I need to know how the joke goes for the punchline to work. It's just goes something like, how do you know that Joe Biden cheated? He won. Not saying he's a better man. I'm saying the Democratic Party, they're garbage. I rest my case. Let's go to comments, guys, and don't forget to hit the like button.